Greetings Options Traders. Thank you for joining us today and many thanks to my Patreon members for supporting my educational programs. If you're new to options trading and would like to get some private coaching, please visit my website for details. If you learned something important in this free lesson, please support my YouTube channel by subscribing and by sharing this video. Selling put options on your favorite stocks and ETFs is a relatively simple way to generate consistent monthly income with options. However, selling put options does have risk and that risk is called assignment. Let's pause the video for a few seconds and review what assignment entails. When I sell put options, I am betting that the underlying stock or ETF stays above a certain price by a certain date. Selling put options is a net credit trade, which means that I receive a credit up front. I get to keep 100% of the initial credit if I hold the trade all the way until expiration. However, I can always close my trade prior to expiration by buying back my short put option. If I do that, then my profit will be less than my original credit. Closing a trade early removes the risk of assignment. Even though assignment is not a terrible thing, my personal preference is to avoid assignment because I don't want to have a lot of money tied up indefinitely in one stock or ETF. Here are some general rules to follow when selling put options. Choose good stocks and good ETFs because you may end up owning them for a while. The ideal time to sell put options is when the underlying stock or ETF is oversold. Choose put options that have 30 to 45 days until expiration. Choose put options that have a probability in the money number that's between 20% and 30%. And finally, close your trade when your profit is at least 50% of the maximum profit or when the underlying stock is overbought. Do not sell put options on stocks or ETFs that you do not want to own as long-term investments. Selling put options is risky and you may lose money. The trades discussed in my videos are not trade recommendations. Let's start by looking at a one-year daily chart for XLK which is the Technology Sector ETF. And let's go back to April 8, 2021, when XLK was right here at the top at a new all-time high, and it was trading at around $140. I mentioned earlier that the ideal time to sell a put option is when the underlying stock or ETF is oversold. However, sometimes I get a little impatient and I want to put on a trade when the underlying is in the overbought region up here at the top of the stochastics. Selling put options when the underlying is in the overbought region is a pretty risky thing to do because there's a very high probability that the underlying may turn around and go back down. So if the underlying goes down, put premiums are going to rise. So if I sell a put option at the top of the stochastics and the ETF drops, I'm going to see a paper loss in my trade. But what if there was a way to hedge my short put option with a little insurance? That insurance is going to be a debit or a bear put spread. So instead of selling to open a single leg naked put option, I'm going to convert the trade to something called a ratio put spread. A ratio put spread is a combination of two option strategies, a single leg put option and a debit put spread. The embedded debit put spread allows me to make a little extra money if the underlying does indeed go down. I'm using a neat little tool called ThinkBack, which is part of Thinkorswim. And we're going to go back in time to April 8, 
2021, which was the date that I placed my trade. This is basically a snapshot of the options chain at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on April 8. So this is what the options look like at the end of the trading session. I'm going to show you how to build a ratio put spread by going backwards. The first thing we're going to do is select an expiration date and we're going to choose May 21, 2021, which was 43 days away. Remember, we're going back to April 8. I start out by looking at the short put option, the probability in the money number that I'm comfortable with is something between 20% and 30%. So I'm going to start out by selecting the 132 put option as my short option. Then I'm going to buy a long put with a higher strike price. So let's change this from a single to a ratio spread. This is the one that I want, back ratio. So we're going to click on this and then click on the bid. Here's my ratio spread at the bottom of this page. I'm buying to open one long put with a strike price of 133, and I'm selling to open twice as many short puts with a strike price of 132. So notice that I am selling twice as many short puts. So embedded in this trade is a debit put spread, which increases in value if the underlying security drops. This trade gives me a net credit of $1.24. For one ratio put spread, I'm receiving $124. So notice that a ratio put spread is a net credit trade. That means I get paid up front. So now let's analyze this trade. Let's figure out what's going to happen to this trade at expiration. If XLK closes above my long strike of 133, both of these puts are going to be out of the money and therefore they will be worthless at the end. So the only thing that's remaining is the original credit of $1.24. So again, if XLK closes above 133 at expiration, my total profit on the trade is simply the original credit of $124. If XLK closes right at 132 at expiration, then my profit is going to be the original credit of $124 plus an extra $100 from the embedded debit put spread. This is a $1 wide ratio spread. So if the underlying lands right at 132 at expiration, my debit put spread will realize maximum profit of $1. I've got one contract, so it'll give me a maximum profit of $100. I also collected $124 up front. So the max profit is going to be $100 plus $124 equals $200. And $24 if XLK lands right at 132 at expiration. If XLK lands below 132 at expiration, my max profit is still $224. But then I have a naked put that's in the money, so I will either have to buy it back or roll it or take the assignment. My break even point on this trade is the short strike of 132 minus my original credit of 124 minus the extra $1 credit from the embedded debit vertical. So that gives me $129.76, which means that my trade is not going to lose any money until XLK is below 129.76. A ratio put spread is a pretty complex advanced strategy and there are many different ways to manage a trade like this. I know I'm going pretty fast, but I'm going to have a link to another video that explains this in more detail. Now let's fast forward to the expiration date of May 21, 2021. So we can see that XLK was trading at around $136. 
so it's above both of my strike prices. That means both of my options were out of the money at expiration. What I'd like to do is buy back my one naked put for one cent to remove the risk of assignment. Even though my short put was $4 out of the money on the expiration date, it's always a good idea to buy back the naked put for cheap price because you never know what's going to happen at the end. So at around 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, I bought back my naked put for one cent and I left open the remaining vertical spread. So my profit in the end was around $121. In summary, selling put options on your favorite stocks and ETFs is a relatively simple way to generate consistent monthly income. However, sometimes it's a good idea to consider buying a debit put spread as a hedge in case the stock goes down. By converting a naked put trade into a ratio put spread, this trade pretty much becomes a non-directional trade. So we can make money no matter which way the stock goes, up, sideways, or down, as long as it doesn't go down too much. Thank you for watching.